Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. In the last video, we saw how we could load in XML uh, from files, how we could work with it in Scala, and in particular how we could use the backslash operator and the backslash backslash operator to, uh, to go through and parse different parts of the XML. And I want to continue with that in this video, and what I want to do is I want to load this in more to a format that we would normally use in a Scala program. So we go back into our source code. We had loaded in this grades.xml. You don't really want to be utilizing just the base XML while you're writing your your code. Uh, you really want to load it into a format that's that's more usable inside of the program and then when you're done you can convert it back to XML and write it out. And so I want to go through how we could do that. So to go along with each of the students that's in the XML, I'm going to create a, a case class for a student because inside of the Scala program, this is how I want to represent things. So I want the name to be a string. Um, I need to have the uh, grades and I want different kinds of grades. Quizzes. Now what should quizzes be? I am actually going to go with a list of um, how about we go with a list of, I'll make a type called a grade. We'll have to go back and write that. Test is also a list of grade. Assignments is a list of grade. And I'm good with that being the end of our student right now. And so above that I'm going to go ahead and put a case class for a grade telling us what that is, well, um, there is the value that they got on the grade, which is an integer, and then there is the possibility for having a comment, which, let's go with an option on string. Do this in the, the Scala way. I could just make it a string and make it so if there isn't a comment, it's it's null. But that's actually, I could just go with a string, go with a string and have nothing there. No, I think I, I like the option. Um, it's good for you to see how to use that and that is the uh, the standard way of doing things in Scala when a field is optional um, or when it might not be there. So we have this which loads in the file and what I want to do is I want to write some code that converts each element of this, each element of our students into an actual student. So Let's write a two student method, and it's going to take a node. So, this is a node that's being pulled from the XML. And what it's supposed to give us back is a student. Okay, so, it's, we're going to get passed in something like that, just one student from here. And I want to build up an output of this type uh, of case class. Um, I'm going to do this, I'm going to introduce some variables here, so val name equals, in order to get the name, I do node, and I search inside of it for at name, remember name is an attribute, so I want to put the at there so that I'll find it, and then I want to pull the, I don't want the whole attribute, I just want a string, so I'm going to get the text out of that attribute. What about for quizzes, tests, and assignments? Well those are each in their own nodes and so how about we write a to grade which takes a node and it returns to us a grade and we'll come back and we'll write that but if I have that function then I can say quizzes equals node backslash quiz because that is the name of uh, the element that we put in here. And then I want to map that to, to grade. Oops. Yeah. So that every element that gets pulled out of this, and this is one of the, the nice things. You saw earlier that, that, so we had an element, a node, and a node sequence. That node sequence, which is what we actually get returned by the backslash operator, is a sequence. 
it's just like it has all the same methods that you've had on the list in the array. So things like map are available to us as our filter, as our you know, contains, length, everything that you've been used to doing on lists and arrays, you can now do on these node sequences. And that is remarkably powerful. And then, of course, I have my tests and my assignments, and they need to search for test and assignment. Once I have all of those, I can return a student of name, quizzes, tests, assignments. Now, of course, the data file that we have here, none of my students have an assignment. So what's going to happen here? Is that, is that a problem for us? Well, node slash assignment, if there are no assignments, is going to be an empty sequence. And when I map an empty sequence to, to this, that's not a problem. I did just realize there is a bug, but I want you to see it when we try to compile this. In order to compile it, though, I have to finish to grade first. So this method here, or this function here, is supposed to get something like that, or something like that. Okay? It's just going to be either a quiz or a test. It's whatever we get returned from here, a single element out of that. Okay? Now, in some ways, I have the same structure where, and then I can return grade of value and comment. Okay, now this is where things get more interesting. Um, the value is easy. The value is simply going to be uh, take the text from the node and just to be safe, I'm going to trim it down. Um, hmm. you know, there's a part of me that wonders if the text from the node is actually going to give me the text from the sub-elements. We'll find out in just a bit, in which case I might have to change my formatting because I'm worried about that. Let's actually print it out here. Okay, and then the comment. Now the comment is supposed to be an option on string. And so uh, there's you know, one of, of these things, uh, or there's none of them. And so we're either going to return some string, or we're going to return none here. And of course to get these things out, I do node backslash comment. Now this doesn't give me back an option, this gives me back a sequence. Um, and let's see here. Let's go there. This happens to be a. So I want to pull the text out of each of those. Um, let's go, let's look in the API. Because there is a part of me that has a feeling. You can apply an option to an A. Uh, yeah. Actually, DD. Call that comments. Val comment equals if comments dot is empty, then it returns none. Else. Uh, else we'll return sum of comments.head. Okay, that should be a string. And I'm going to go ahead and close this one. And we'll see how many typos I have. Uh, error not found names. Well, that's because it is singular, just name. Error type mismatch on quizzes found. Oh, yep, and this is the error that I was expecting. We said that our quizzes and our tests and whatnot were list, and this did a node sequence, and then we did a map on node sequence, which gives us back 
just an immutable sequence, not specifically a list. If I want this to specifically be a list, I can call to list on it. Now if we run that, assignments, once, now I'm missing an S instead of having an extra one. And there we go. Okay, so this runs now. I didn't exactly print out my results there, nor did I actually call these functions. Uh, let's just call it students equals. So I am going to take my grade XML and search inside of it for all nodes that have the label student. And then I'm going to map that to two student. And then let's print line, let's do students for each print line. Now if we run this, we have a runtime error. Yep, okay, so this is this is an interesting challenge in that the form of our XML, if when we call the text on a node, we actually get the text of that node and all of its subnodes. And so that is going to cause me to potentially change the way that I do, that I store these things. Um, and in particular, what I'm gonna do go through and there's one of the things about VI is if I'm t retyping the same thing over and over again I have an easy way to deal with that okay and then I'm gonna make that oops insert let's go ahead and insert all of our end quotes And now for these, because they don't have any comments, I am going to make them uh, empty elements. For these that do have comments, I am going to put the comment inside. Um, I guess technically I can actually simplify it. Uh, then I don't have the, the option for none. So I I'm, I'm think I'm gonna stick with actually having the comment in there. This one needs that. these okay so the XML is nice and flexible but it helps if we make it fit the way that we are reading things in and our error here is we got a number format exception on the empty string uh, oh, and that's right, I did not change this, so I want this to be node backslash at value to int. And call it on an in insert text. You can't call to int on an entire on a node, which is what you get back or a node sequence. Um, so we got back a node sequence here because that's what the backslash gives you back. Uh, in this case, it's a node sequence that should have one attribute in it, assuming it was found. Otherwise, it's going to be empty. And there we go. And so I now have four student case classes. You'll note that most of them, for example, the grades, there's no comment there. There's none there. Here we have a grade and it has some. Very well done. Um, there is also an empty list at the end of each one of these because they don't have any assignments in them. And so the last thing I want to do is actually I'm going to convert that to an array and that way we could write the rest of a program that uses this students array and every time we make changes to students it would stick that back in there. 
Now what we haven't done is the ability to write it back out to the XML file. 